Hello everyone, I'm bringing you a video today, almost follow-up I guess you could say, to the recent video looking at East German magazine pouches. And we're looking at the progression of another piece of East German kit here. We're looking at the black leather enlisted men's belt, which draws heavily on preceding German practice, going way back into the Victorian era. And that's one thing I like with a German kit at this time, both East and West. It does draw to quite a large degree on preceding designs of equipment. Uh, both from a sort of a stylistic point of view. There were better designs, you could say, in terms of actual load carrying equipment, but they stuck with something which harkened back to German equipment of the past and gave quite a distinctive look. And I like that, you know, it's quite interesting. The belts started off uh, being used in the field as well as for a parade and for with the service uniform and for walking out and so forth. And then when the grey nylon equipment came in, the leather belt was steadily rele relegated to just wear with the service uniform and for walking out and parade and so forth. So we'll have a look at this belt in a bit more detail now, rather three versions of this belt uh, to show the evolution of the design. So here we have the three belts we're going to talk about. On the left we have the earliest example and then the most up-to-date example on the right here, the more modern example. And these are all ostensibly a black leather belt with the East German buckle there in silver tone. You can see the national emblem in the centre there focus. So these harken back to previous designs of German belts and military belts, the way the buckle attaches, the design of the buckle and so forth, all very similar to things you see issued in the Third Reich and Imperial Germany as well, really bringing the older designs forward in that regard. So basically preceding German design but with an East German flair, obviously and having the national emblem in the centre of the belt buckle here. You even have the sort of pebble grain texture to the, the texture effect to the buckle there, as you can see. This is the earliest example, as I say, and if we look at the back here, what marks this out as the earliest example we have here is the fact that the hook on the end of the belt, which hooks into the back of the buckle, I'll show you this here, like that, is stitched in place, as you can see. So we have that very visible row of stitching when this is worn the stitching is quite obvious. So if we look at the back here, the belt necks down slightly and then is turned back on itself through the metal hook there and stitched in position as you can see. So this carries across from preceding German designs again as I say having the hook on the end of the belt and then a loop on the back of the buckle and if we have a look at the back of the buckle, buckle here you can see that loop which is welded in place on the back here. Now the buckle is held in place on this leather section stitched to the back of the belt here and this is a common feature across all three and then the buckle actually has a, a tongued uh, pin across here which passes through the holes in that to hold the buckle in place so that's how you adjust this in as you actually move the buckle up and down on the back of the belt there again in common with preceding German designs. As I say this is the earliest example with this hook on the end stitched in place and that hooks in like that as I say. So pop that one back down here. The design would then be altered and this is again very similar. Same design of buckle essentially. You can see here we have the loop on the back there. The buckle is basically identical. In this case we have a section of brown leather on the back rather than black. Just a manufacturing variation there. But this fits the buckle to the belt in exactly the same way as you can see. It's adjusted in exactly the same way and in this instance the buckle is the same. But the hook on the end is now riveted in place, so you don't have that visible row of stitching when this is hooked together, as you can see. So a metal section has been riveted onto the end here, and I would say this simplifies manufacturing somewhat. You've just got this bent over the end, and then a couple of small rivets worked through. So this is something you see on Second War era German belts. Uh, this method of attaching the hook onto the end of the belt was quite common and it's certainly simpler than doubling the belt back on itself and stitching it through. It also means this end of the belt is thinner so you don't end up with the belt sitting slightly off from the waist around the front and you don't get that row of stitching visible at the front as well so from a visual point of view it neatens things up a bit. But otherwise the belt is basically the same and functions in exactly the same manner. I'll put this one down again as well and have a look at the next one. So. Finally, the design was updated further and the actual design of the buckle was altered. So if we look at the back of this, we no longer have that loop. We have a hook welded to the back here. 
and I would say this again probably simplifies manufacturing somewhat and this is just a piece of metal bent over and welded in place on the back here rather than the little loop which is flattened out at each end, each end and all the rest of it. So this is slightly, probably slightly easier in terms of manufacturing I would say. If we unroll the belt here we can see at the back this buckle attaches and adjusts in the same way as we saw previously with a, another section of leather sewn on at the back and then a rotating pin with two tongues which fit through there as you can see. And at this end, of course, we no longer have a hook, we have a loop because the hook's been moved onto the back of the buckle. So that now hooks together like that. And this is riveted in place in the same way as we saw with the preceding design. So you've just moved from having a hook riveted onto the end to having the loop riveted onto the end here. And the hook is now on the back of the buckle. And this was the, the later design, the latter design of this, this belt. Again, with dates for these, I'm not entirely sure on the transition. I believe this would be early 60s, possibly mid to late 60s, and then possibly into the 70s. And it, I believe it was in the 70s when the des design change came to this particular design with the hook on the back of the buckle rather than on the end of the belt. And this mirrors changes, as I said earlier in the video, this mirrors changes with the gray nylon belts as well. The earliest versions of those have a, a stitched over section which attaches the hook on the end then you move to having a hook riveted in place and then you move to having the loop riveted in place with the hook moved to the back of the back of the buckle uh, obviously the buckles in those instances are painted gray as well so slightly different design of buckle there from that point of view as well but in terms of the actual way these uh, hook together the uh, gray nylon belts parallel these changes in the design so i hope you found it interesting looking at this you can see there the slight changes to the design in the belt to simplify manufacture, moving away from something which really was derived from Second World War and earlier practice with these belts to something that, as I say, is a little bit more easy to manufacture. Hopefully you found it interesting looking at this. If you have and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing, please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.